We're live in the pits of metal chaos with host Dave. Got a line of special guests. One of the power vocalist Tim Ripper Owens. How's it going, Tim? Good. How are you, man? Good. Good to have you on the air, man. Yeah, nice to be on the air. Yes. Yeah, I had uh, Harry and Sean on in February <laughs> together, but I didn't, couldn't get all three of you on together. Oh, well, that, that would have been even more exciting. Anytime you get Harry on the air, that's exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, so the three tremors, you guys got some uh, tour dates coming up in Europe and the U.S., I saw. Yeah, we've been touring quite a bit with it, and, uh, you know, there's a demand to uh, to do it, hit these, these small clubs in, in different markets. And, yeah, we've been, you know, we've, we've done the U.S. already once and Europe already once, and now we're hit, doing it again and hitting places we haven't been. Yeah, I see you're coming to Milwaukee with my uh, buddy Randy Kastner, his fest over there, the Blades of Steel. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, uh, you know, that's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a brand new festival because he, he was doing a, a fest called the Spring Bash every year. Now, now it, this is the first time doing the Blades of Steel fest. Yeah, it should be cool. I'm looking forward to it. So now, with the al- album, how's the sales been for the... Three Tremors album. It's been good, you know. I mean, it's uh, you know the thing about the record is it's definitely marketed to certain types of people who certain types of metal lovers. You know, it's not one that's gonna. Uh, you know, Spanish. it's really funny. The other day, somebody were coming to England and their their backdrop is Iron Maiden and and they uh, on their on their social media page and the guy said, "Hey, they're coming to England." He's like, "Ah, dude." Too heavy for me, mate. I'm like, wow. Wait, you got Iron Maiden and we're too heavy, but I get it though, because it is just balls out craziness. That's for sure, man. So now you guys are doing re-releasing the the album with a, you know three different versions of all three. Of you guys doing your own, you know, singing the whole thing on just one vocal each, each album. Yeah, you know, and I'll tell you what happened was when we recorded the the album. Uh, we didn't just sing parts, you know. Sean did say, "Okay, here's the here's the script, and here's what you, I need you to sing." Uh, Sean, um, we, I sang the whole record. You know, I mean, I just went from beginning to end, and you know, made my own harmonies, and did my own stuff, and tried to sing a little bit different than than uh, his version, and uh, you know, even left out a few lines that I that I thought wasn't really something I would put in, and so that's. You know, and I don't know if that was his intention at first when he made this record. I'm pretty sure it wasn't his intention at first. I don't know, but, you know, I think it's just that the versions came back. Even though it worked together, they also sounded different. So, you know, and it's nice because it's not, let's release three separate records and three and three whole price records. It's, you know, a three combo pack that's coming out. So it's kind of nice. Right. Now, now you you just you, were, you just came back from where Brazil? I was in Brazil. Uh, um, uh, hit hit that really hard and really good. And uh, you know, it, I love I love you know. It's nice that I get to do these things all over the place, and I got a great band from Brazil that that has my material and those. You know, we change the set around every time, so um, hit South America a lot with a great band there. Uh, yeah, you know, so I'm back and uh, getting ready to do a show this this weekend with uh, with Neil Zaza here locally, and then I'm going to do the show with KK and David and Les, and do that show, and then uh, hit the road with, and then I do the I do want I run through Canada with the Drover Brothers, and then I'm going to hit the road. Uh, doing the three trimmers so it's going to be nice and busy so do you got any other recordings going on at the moment well you know it's funny i put out so dang many records lately i mean i put out three last year with the three trimmers and the new revenge spirits of fire that uh but I, you know I, I i've been special guesting on a lot of recordings and then i got one coming out with glenn poland that did all the vocals on that and uh you can go to Glenn Poland's page and check it all out. And, you know, I'm trying to start working on a new uh, solo record. Um, but I'm so busy. 
busy recording other stuff and, and doing other stuff and held hostage. I sang on this held hostage record and held hostage is a straightforward rock and roll kind of band, hard rock, rock and roll that, you know, old style and the ACDC kind of vein. And they, uh, friends of mine, not usually the kind of record I would do, but the reason why I really did it, I, I dug it that it was just basic and old fashioned metal rock or hard rock. But also, they do a lot for veterans, and they, they donate a lot of money to the veterans. So when they when I read a, up on that, and they told me all about that, I thought, man, this is a great thing to do. You know, uh, I'm doing it for the veterans like that. Yeah, that's awesome. So now let me rewind the clock back with you, Tim. Um, what year did you start singing? Well, I mean, I was always a choir singer in school, and I always, you know, that was a big thing with me. But I think probably... Yeah, obviously professionally when I made Judas Priest was when I really went professional. But you know, I had the band Winter's Bane and I had record out with them and uh, you know, but making Judas Priest in ninety six was uh, was the opening well, I don't know if it would be for sure time, but it definitely was the the, the time to make uh, make it professional. So now for both singing did we uh, self taught or did you take lessons? Uh well, I was self-taught. I mean, I, I, naturally, I was gifted to do it. But, um, you know, it took, uh, I learned a lot in, in choir with great choir teachers. And uh, I'm still learning as I go along. I still try to learn. But, I mean, you know, I was born with something and I just was able to, to, to run with it, you know. Now, you got a, you got a sponsor with Ener- I mean, Monster Energy? I do. They've been, you know, they've been doing stuff for me for years, and a, you know, great, uh, a great company that helps musicians out. I mean, they make my backdrops and they make my, you know, photos and they send me places to play, and it's a great company for for musicians. It always has been. Man, now let let me ask you what what what's what was your greatest memory of being in the band Judas Priest? <laughs> well, probably just the good times we had. Probably the friendship we had. We got along so well, and you know they treated me great right from the start. You know, just probably the you know sitting at the pub or or going to dinner or just hanging out. You know, we uh, we had great times. You know, and that was probably the biggest memory of that is, is joining your your heroes and uh, and becoming uh, good friends. Now, how about Eisters? What was your greatest memory of being in Eisters? Uh, you know, I love the material. I love the, especially the Framing Armageddon CD. I really loved it a lot. And, uh, probably also off the Glorious Burden, I learned more about history off of making the Glorious Burden than I did in school. So, uh, you know, I, I had great times with them as well. Totally different crowds, totally different uh, things going on. But, uh, you know, the records were... Uh, Awesome. Now, are you ever going to do anything more with uh, Beyond Fear? Uh, I might. You know, I mean, I'm doing a new solo record. Like I said, going to work on it. John Capri, a guitar player for Beyond Fear, is going to help write that. I think John Capri and and um, uh, Terry Kelly, we're going to both, we're all three going to try to collaborate and, and write the solo record. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I'd like to. It's just a little bit harder nowadays. You know, I can make a record, uh, but it's financially you have to pay for everything to make it. And the labels will, are are uh, more into, you know, maybe helping. It's easier for me to sit home and write a solo record than it is to write the Beyond Fear record. We actually wrote most of it, but it's just to, to, uh, to get the backing, to get the studios and stuff and do it in the time. And, you know, you really can't afford to tour with it. That's kind of the bad thing to take a band out on the road. It's it's really a losing situation financially anymore, unless you do it a, a solo wise like I do it. But you know, uh, I I'm definitely I definitely foresee a new uh, Beyond Fear record coming out, and uh, it's just a matter of figuring out the time and right time and, and when I can get the studio to do it. Now, do you have a favorite uh, show that you played on the? Little club tour with, you know, the three three tremors. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you, the New York show was really great because we were shy. It was a great crowd. It was a Monday night, and I think it was a Monday night. I can't remember exactly what it was, but you know, 
Don James that came out, he even said, wow, what a great crowd. It was really, I think it was the Gramercy Theater. It was a great crowd. And, uh, um, but, I mean, they've all been different. You know, when we toured Europe, the, the record wasn't even out yet. You know, when we first did that, it was supposed to be out in October, so we planned a tour, and then it didn't come out. And that tour was fantastic, you know. Then we come back to America, and and, uh, and it was uh, it was great as well. I mean, it was even you know even better because the record was out, so the crowds were even bigger and uh, and better. So um, I think all of them. It's just a you know getting out and doing it, learning where to be and what to do. With you have three singers just screaming their lungs out, learning that you know what you can hold back because this music is kind of crazy, and there's three guys up there doing it, so maybe hold back a little bit. Now, do you have a fondest memory of your whole music career? Uh, you know, I, well, making Judas Priest is probably the top. Getting that phone call about, you know, Judas Priest wanting to, to try me out was probably one of the top things. Uh, you know, being nominated, going to the Grammys with Judas Priest was another uh, top thing. So uh, that was a, a, a big one as well. All right, now after all the years in the music business, what would you consider to be the pros and cons? Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I think the, the, the bad thing about it sometimes is now is just the social media. And the, you know, if somebody lies about you or they take uh, text messages you've had out there and they've one-sided it, they've erased what you're even talking about, they make people look bad, look artists look bad they say one line in an interview and then that has nothing, to, which they could do it with this same thing, that has nothing to do with what you're really talking about. You're just saying something. Then that becomes the headline. It becomes what people think about you. Nobody nowadays reads anything except the headline. They might listen to this. They might listen to things, right? They'll listen to stuff. But it takes a lot for them to to actually get into it and figure out what you're saying. And it's it's, I think that's the bad thing. Uh, people have become lazy about concerts. They'll say, man, I didn't know you were in town. As I'm saying, thank you on Facebook. Thanks, Santiago Chile, for a great show. And they're like, I never even know you were here. And I'm like, well, so I've advertised for two months that I'm coming to, to town, but you, you saw the one time I said thank you. You know. So I think people expect musicians to show up at their door and tell them they're playing their venue. When I was young, we went and got the scene magazine. It's even easier nowadays. You just click, look, pick your phone up and go, "Who? if I want to see a band or a venue or local venues, you just go to their Facebook page and see who's playing. It's even easier than it used to be. But for some reason, people expect, because people have gotten lazy uh, with social media, that they don't even know you're coming. Um, there's people that say to me, so what have you been up to? And I'm like, you're on my Facebook page and you're asking me what have I been up to <laughs> since Judas Priest. Since Judas Priest. I've had people say, what have you been up to? And they're, all my, they're sending me a message. One guy asked me the other day, this is no lie, he messages me five times a week. I got rid of Messenger for years and now I have it so if anybody wants to message me uh, or talk about anything, I don't care. I'm on, on my Facebook page. But he said, so did you ever record a record with Judas Priest? This guy messages me on my Facebook page for years, all the time, and he asked me if I ever recorded anything with Judas Priest. So I'm like, how does how does this even? Wow. What have I done since Judas Priest? You're on my Facebook page every single day. I'm posting something that I'm doing every day, and that's the difference of, of what I think. You know, it's kind of a double thing. The pros is that social media is a great outlet to talk about your craft and talk about your records and talk about things. It's also, it's, it's, it's kind of both things. You know, it's made people lazy where they expect us to, it's like back in the day you would put a flyer, I prepared to this, you used to put flyers on a pole or on a wall in a record store yep. and fans would see it. Nowadays we post it on Facebook, but Fans want us to personally, it's, it's kind of like back then, they would want us to personally go to their house and hand them a flyer. That's what they're asking for now. They want us to personally invite them and tell them what we're doing. And it's like, I, you, you have to, you know, you got to do something yourself. You can't just 
you know, rip off music online like everybody does now and, and stream all their music and let the band get a penny for a, a thousand listens, you know I mean? You're already getting that. We can't do everything for you, you know? Man, yeah, that's crazy, though, how you were saying, you know, fans... Don't know what you, don't even know what you're up to and they're friends with you on Facebook. You know, man. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm I'm pretty damn busy and I have been. <laughs> I love Judas Priest. I've done nothing but pretty amazing stuff, so it's pretty funny. The, this guy has he done anything since Judas Priest? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are you thinking? About? Have I done anything since Judas Priest? I don't know. I've done <laughs> I've done a few things. I don't know. You know what I say to people now? I said this once. I was out with my girlfriend, and I was. We were at. A, we were. I was actually out doing some photos in a video shoot with three trimmers out staying with with Sean, and we were down in Encinita walking around. And this guy was selling us CDs at this little flea market. And he's like, uh, "I'm like, that's yeah, good stuff." So I bought one, and I said, "And I'm like, yeah." Well, he said, "We do." I said, "We do." He goes. Have you done anything? And I just looked at him and said, you know what, just Google me. And so I said, I, I don't, that's, and, my, and she laughed. So now, anywhere I'm at or online or anywhere, someone says, what have you done? Or, you know, who are you? They might not know me. I'll just say, just Google me. Just Google me. You know, <laughs> so, it's pretty funny. Man. So now, the first three Shemmers tour, either either in U.S. or Europe, do you have a mo- uh, most, you know, Embarrassing moment, funny moment, anything? What's that? I said on either the two tours you did with the three chambers in Europe or the U.S. The first tour, do you have any uh, yeah. most? You have any most funny or embarrassing moments from those two tours? Uh, well, probably that the band saw that I liked one show. I I requested afterwards if I could get some prosecco, which is you know like champagne. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah. I'm kind of a sissy when it comes to drinking, so I'll, I'll sit back here and drink a little bit of Prosecco. And it was, it was pretty funny, but we don't run, everything's, you know, God knows what Harry's doing. We're, it's six o'clock in the morning, we're trying to get somewhere, and Harry's in the back of the band singing Britney Spears, or I've never seen somebody so happy and excited all the time. It's like we have a puppy dog in the back seat all the time. Um, <laughs> he's the life of the party, that's for sure. I mean, listen, the great thing about the three trimmers is that everybody's so fun. Everybody gets. I'm I'm probably the most Debbie Downer of everybody because I don't really talk too much and hang out as much as everybody else, and I'm kind of to myself. But there's such great guys to be around. We're all the band, and and you know Sean and Harry. Everybody gets along so well. Everybody's so fun. Uh, everybody's so professional and good. So uh, we don't have a whole lot of. Uh, there probably is. You know what? I'll tell you some funny things. Harry will walk through the airport shaving. Really? Uh, <laughs> or he'll be sitting in a bus shaving. I don't know. In front of, it's, yeah, he's one of the electric shavers. He just whips out and starts shaving as he's walking. So it's the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. So now, Tim, who, who, who are the vocalists that inspire you? Uh, obviously, Halford. Uh, probably top of the list. And I thought it was fantastic. So, and then John Bush obviously came along, and then and Neil before that as well. I mean, Neil was a, was the same thing, but they became even thrashier with with Joey. And, but yeah, I mean, my top ones are Ronnie and Rob, and uh, you know, probably you know, and even David Wayne from Metal Church, another one. All right, now that you mention Ronnie, how how did that Dio hologram tour go? It went really good. It was in such an amazing show. I mean, it's a, such a big production to take out, and it's that's why we haven't done it again because you know it costs Wendy. It's funny, contrary to what people say, it actually costs Wendy a lot of money to do this thing. She spends money to put this thing out there to try to make the fans happy. At the end of the day, the goal is to make money, but uh, she wants to please the fans. This show is so emotional, so amazing. Uh, the screens, you know, not just the hologram which is amazing in itself, but it's Roddy's band with these, these, these screens, LEDs, giant screens projecting, first of all, dragons and, and castles, and then it's got pictures of Roddy and videos, and it's unbelievable. It's just a, it's a real, real show, and I really look forward to doing it more. Uh, hopefully in uh, next year we, we hit it. It was, you know, when we first did it in Europe, 
it was a shell of what it is now. And we ended in Los Angeles with a sold out show and the crowd and the reviews of that show, which was great, were unbelievable. I mean, Sean was there. When Sean saw it at rehearsal, he was like, holy shit, this thing is amazing. People, if they don't like it, they don't know what they're talking about. They haven't been here, you know. Uh, again, that's people online bitching about stuff. They'll go see a movie with an actor playing Freddie Mercury who probably doesn't even know a Freddie Mercury song when he started it, uh, who isn't doing it from the heart, getting paid millions and millions of dollars, everybody involved, uh, think it's, it's a great idea, right? Or if they made a movie with an actor playing Lemmy, they would think it's a great idea. But if you do a hologram tour celebrating him, that's costing money, they think it's disgusting. I'm like, what? You go into a wax museum and see a wax Lemmy, or, you know, but you don't think that's, I don't get it. But when people saw it, they got it. People who didn't want to see it saw it, they were like, man, this thing's pretty great. Yeah, I saw some of the people's comments saying, oh, the deal is dead, let it go. What, what's this hologram crap? <laughs> yeah, I never saw one person, maybe I missed it, on the on the Queen movie saying, Freddie Mercury's dead, let it go. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> I never seen that, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of crazy. If Wendy Gia wanted to make music, she would do, no or money, she would do nothing. She would sit at home, and stop raising millions and millions of dollars for the Stand Up and Shout Cancer Foundation and do nothing but sit back and make money off of Ronnie's music and make money off of all the real estate and all of her other jobs and things that she does. She would sit back and do nothing but that stuff. But no, she wants to celebrate Ronnie's music and try to make the fans happy. So it's nice to see. She's an amazing lady. Amazing lady. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, she's great. I've never met... Ronnie was the same way, and that's how she is, too. Now, as far as Three Tremors go, you, you, you guys just shot a fourth video? Yeah, I think it's just live stuff. You know, we've shot so many damn videos. Uh, you know, we 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 shot two studio-type videos, and then the rest of them are kind of live videos, so it's kind of crazy. It's always something. Sean's always doing something. Yeah, I, I, was, I was reading there's a fourth fourth video you guys just did. Do you, yeah, you know, yeah. Do you know what song it's for? I don't, unless it's... I don't. I don't know what he's doing it for. Hmm. All right, so... Let me ask you a fun, a couple of fun questions here, Tim. Ready? Okay, yep. What, what's your favorite food you like to eat? Ah, uh, favorite food. Man, I don't know. Mexican food, probably. What's your favorite beverage of choice? Uh, well, I'll say Monster Energy, huh? even even though I only drink one of them a day. I, I, I mean, water is probably my favorite, but I'm going to go with Monster Energy. Yeah, you drink too many of them things a day, you know, that stuff's not that great for you. Well, it, <laughs> listen, that, it's it's not, it's like anything. If I drink too much water, it's not good for me. If I drink too much soda, it's not good for me. Obviously, you can't drink too much alcohol, it's not good for you. And that's pretty much with anything. But they love to say, Monster, if you drink too much, listen, there's, more caffeine in coffee than there is in that. So you can't drink too much coffee. I sure drink a hell of a lot of coffee a day. So what's your favorite uh, alcohol drink? Uh, just a regular lager, Pilsner, light beer, you know. Big a little Ultra, Miller Lite, something, you know, like that. What was the first country you, you ever went to? Judas Priest, Defenders of the Faith. What musical people inspire you? What musical people inspire me? Yeah, it doesn't have to be vocalists oh. either. It could be guitar players, drummers, bass players. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ronnie Dio is the, the, the top of the list for me that inspired me because uh, there's just something, you know, uh, about listening to his stuff. It's, it just inspires me every time. Now, for the Three Tremors um, album, how, how much of the lyrics did you write for the album? What's that? 
And I said, for the three tremors album, how, how, how much of the lyrics did you put into that album? Um, Sean already had it written. Now, for the next album, are you, are you going to be putting any lyric, lyrical up input in that one? Um, I don't know. I, I hope, probably. I hope, you know, I think that's the plan to kind of uh, get involved with that and do a little more, but we'll see what happens. He's, there, he's in the writing process in a second, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool to get you and uh, Tyrant to put some uh, lyrics in there, too. Yeah, I, I, it'd be good if we all do it, yeah. So, so currently, what are your top three favorite bands currently? Oh, shit, I don't even know. I don't even, I mean, I, I'm i going to go with the, uh, man, I don't even know what, what it would be, because I, how about, I still how, listen to a lot of old stuff. How about your top three favorite bands of a lifetime? I mean, I would, I would say if it's top three bands now that I listen to, I don't know. I mean, I, it's impossible. I listen to a lot of Sabotage and, and Dio and, and Disturbed. That's probably the, all of Dio's career is probably what I listen to a lot. Yeah, I thought you were just hanging out with uh, Disturbed recently. Yeah, yeah. That, that would, where'd you see them at? Uh, here in Cleveland, here in Cleveland, friends with with the guys and really nice guys and went up, hung out, and great show and you know hung out for a bit. It was a good time. So now for two thousand twenty, what what are you, what are your plans? Any you, you have anything yet? Well, a lot of touring. I think it's going to be filled with touring, touring, touring. So that's uh, that's the plan right now. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, we'll see, you know, how that works out. But that's that's the plan now. I'll try to get some recording in and, and write the uh, solo record. Okay. Well, Tim, I want to thank you uh, for taking time to interview. You got it, man. Anytime, give me a shout, and we'll do it again. And keep making metal great again. You got it, buddy. All thank right. you. All right. Bye. Thanks, man. Bye. All right. Later.